Hi, this is Brig with Sewell Direct, and today we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot the Blast IR, which is used to extend your the IR from your remote control so that you can control devices that are out of remote range. Now the Blast IR is a very simple setup. There's a couple of different pieces that you'll need. There's the power supply, the actual connecting block right here, the IR receiver right here, and the IR emitters. Now for starters, you're going to want to plug the power into the wall and then this side to the connecting block is going to go into the port that's labeled power 12 DC and not the status, the green one. That one we're actually not going to be using. But then once you get that plugged in, you'll get this red LED indicating that the power is okay. And then the receiver, which is the rectangular piece right here, is going to be plugged into this port that's right next to the power port labeled IR receiver. And then lastly, your emitters, which there are four sets of emitters that are included, so you can control up to eight devices. These are going to be plugged in to this opposite side. Now there's six ports, they're labeled one to six. It really doesn't matter which ones you use. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug them in here. Okay, now we don't really have an actual setup that, uh, that we're using, but we're, we are going to demonstrate how you can test independently whether or not your Blast IR kit is working or not. Now there's a couple of key things to be aware of. Number one is this little blue indicator light right here on the connecting block. If you send a signal to the receiver and the Blast IR connecting block and receiver are working properly, then you're going to get a blinking blue light on both the receiver and the connecting block, indicating that the signal is making it from here to here. Now, if you're having trouble from there, getting your Blu-ray player, cable box, whatever devices you have to respond to it, then the problem might be coming from here to the emitters. And so the first thing to try is to just swap out the emitters that you currently have plugged in with a different set of emitters. And if that doesn't do the trick, then there's a way that we can actually see if the signal is getting from here out to here. Now, there's no indicator light on the emitters, as you can see that will tell us to the, to the naked eye whether it's working or not. However, the IR that's coming out of these emitters can be seen when using a digital camera, such as that of your phone. And so we're going to do a little test with that right now. Okay, so we got a pretty good shot of it right there. Now let's send a signal. There it is. We got that blinking blue light that we can see through the lens of the camera. So that's indicating to us that the signal is making it out of here successfully. So if you're still having problems from that point, getting your device to respond after seeing that the signal's coming out, then it might just be a problem with emitter placement. Sometimes you just need to really find that sweet spot by using trial and error, maybe hover over your device while sending a signal to the receiver and finding which spot is most sensitive to that IR signal. And uh, if, if you're really having a lot of trouble with it, sometimes what you can do is actually flip the emitter around and see if it gets to it better coming out of the dome side. And then if that is the case, you might just try taping it on from there. That's what some people have to do depending on how sensitive the IR receiver window of their device is. Sometimes there's a very thick IR receiver window that IR doesn't get through very easily. And so when they turn it around to this dome side, it doesn't have to get through this opaque adhesive that is normally used to stick the emitter to your device. And because it doesn't have to get through that adhesive, it can be a little bit easier getting that IR signal to your device. So that's it, thank you for watching. If you have any more questions or your device is, uh, is still not working after these troubleshooting steps, then feel free to call or email us at sewelldirect.com.